Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day and today I would like to share a little unboxing with you guys while I'm packaging and then an unboxing. This is a smaller version of a rather wonderful larger knife that I had checking out that checking out that I had checked out I believe towards the end of last year or so. There was only one little thing about it that kept it from being an insanely perfect knife. All right, let's get into it. The unboxing knife is gonna be what I got not too long ago. This is the full tie stinger. It's been pretty nice. I've already put my own edge on here, 17 degrees. It is absolutely wonderful and ridiculously slicey. Some vape juice. What is that? We have a fancy schmancy Kunwu. Let's go ahead and get into this guy. You could probably already see uh, that little <clears throat> model sticker down there. But these were kind of silently released. Kunwu has an Instagram and other media platforms, but no one's really shown this at the moment, as far as I know. So I may be the first, or maybe at least one of the earlier content creators to uh, bring this guy up. So as I mentioned before, I've had this exact same variation, just the larger one. <clears throat> That's really nice right there. A wire pocket clip with an extra stud, some candy there. And here we have the knife. Nothing underneath that foam insert that shaped the knife to cradle it during shipment. And speaking of shipment, uh, when I placed my order, it said that it was shipping from LA. I live two hours from LA and uh, it still took like two weeks. So, I mean, hey, whatever. I could have gone and pick it up, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Had plenty of other stuff going on to honestly forget about the order. This is the compact Chad. Let's get this thing out here. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, it's just, it's really everything that I thought it would be. Um, so I'm very happy that it, they, they didn't cheapen out and just have another wire pocket clip. They have the Thai one already installed. T8 hardware all throughout. Body screws, the one screw for the pivot. The face is captured. Uh, D-shaped pivot, I believe. Uh, and again, this is just an unboxing, not a review. This does warrant a, a full review. And one of my biggest things uh, about this knife that I wasn't the biggest fan of was the strength of the Omega Springs. I felt like the larger one was just such a well-executed design. And I'm trying to be as nice as I could possibly be. The knife was so well-built that really the only flaw that I could pick out that could keep this thing from being any more enjoyable was the rather weak Omega Springs. And I was one of very, very few people who had that issue. I had actually reached out personally to Kun Wu and um, they had made a hmm, rather sharp remark uh, in response to my comment about possibly bumping up the strength of the Omega Springs. Something along the lines of, you know, no one else is complaining about it, so we're not going to change it. Something along those lines. This was a while back. I don't remember. Whatever. I'm not the kind of person to get butt hurt. Business is business. They made a wonderful knife that's very well executed. Um, it just so happened that me personally, I felt like the larger one deserved more robust Omega Springs. But because this is on the smaller side, a whole lot more compact. I will say that they haven't done anything to the Omex Springs, and uh, but I do feel like it's a little bit better tuned for a size of knife overall, or the blade overall, because while it is a relatively dense blade, it's not as big as the full size chat was, where there was just so much mass to the blade coming out, it practically just fell out of the handle. And I didn't like that, and I chalked it up to being a safety concern. 
and some people care some people don't but when it comes to safety that is an absolute no-go it does not deserve to stay in my collection uh, especially at the price point that these are coming at now they are very well executed as i mentioned before and they bring a lot to the market absolutely uh, but one thing that i do notice that we're missing here is extra omega springs and it looks like there are let's see this little pouch nothing okay so with the compact chad you do not get extra omega springs kind of a bummer you get an extra clip that's nice you get vape juice that you're never going to use that's nice and overall nice packaging but um omega springs are probably one of the easiest to fault um spring opening retention mechanisms and i'm only speaking from my own personal experience i have busted within two years time maybe five sets overall or one half of, or a half of a set uh, basically rendering the pair trash um very cheap and inexpensive to replace of course but whether they're chinese production or u.s production of mega springs it doesn't matter they are fun and fidgety and you know safety at the forefront of the design when it comes to being able to manipulate uh, a cool design without getting your fingers in the path of the blade but still regardless of what anybody says omega springs can fail they will fail eventually i kind of figured and this is something that made sense to me you know i do experience uh extreme weather changes throughout a very short period of time living in southern california in the high desert region um one day it'll be 110 degrees the next day it'll be freezing cold uh it's <laughs> maybe not that dramatic but um within a month's time temperatures fluctuate like crazy and i thought to myself you know what maybe maybe just maybe and i have a couple of knives in my collection that have omega springs and they're just fine but again i have busted some not the end of the world it's cheap to replace easy to replace once you take apart an omega spring uh retention you know styled knife um it's really not that bad um, it's a little finicky you got to get places in the right position before everything just kind of snaps together and just kind of makes sense just like everything else but um i hope that this thing breaks in um and maybe stiffens up a little bit possibly things just kind of set down in the right place it sounds wonderful it feels wonderful but um I just, I, I hope the Omega Springs don't get loosey-goosey on me. I do have a butt ton of, where are they? Sorry if I jostled the camera a little bit there. <clears throat> These guys right here, and I have more in my little drawer over here. I'm not sure of the size of Omega Springs that they're using here. And typically in my unboxings, I like to do, now I like to do, um, disassemblies but right now I have some other pressing matters going on and I, I don't really have any lack of confidence in the cleanliness and execution of this knife I have a, a good bit of faith and confidence in Kunwu to make things uh, look as good on the inside as they do on the outside really my biggest my only nitpick of this knife was the weak Omega Springs and it seems as if they uh, just decided to stay with the ones that they currently had. Um, maybe in this format, it'll be a little bit more enjoyable to my particular taste. But if not, I'm sure the aftermarket Omega Springs that I've invested in, which wasn't much, um, I'm sure they would suit it just fine and maybe strengthen it a little bit overall. Uh, besides all that nonsense, let's go ahead and talk about a couple of little features about this guy. So. This is their polished DLC over satin. And it has this kind of bronzy tone. Yeah, it does, it's natural, it's kind of how it looks. I think it's beautiful, it's, it's a wonderful look. I'm not the biggest fan of satin, but the satin is so fine and so faint here. It doesn't really bug, visually speaking. Uh, now, this is flat ground, it is not hollow, but it is a shape and design that I think should have been brought to market 
as even the cheapest, thinnest hollow possible. Not a super deep hollow, just a very shallow hollow, if that makes any sense. Just for overall, um, I guess, sliciness, this is a compact knife. Uh, the blade is what I believe to be just around three inches and there's nothing getting in the way of getting a nice full purchase on this. Uh, the jimping here on the back, it's more of a suggestion than anything. It's almost non-existent. It's there visually speaking, but it doesn't feel like much. It's not really adding any sort of grip or traction. I do enjoy that they keep this side nice and clean, but unfortunately they have to put compact chad and ruin this other side of the beautiful TLC blade. Um, the rest of the hardware here and the actual pivot and the axis or the, the crossbar style lock. Um, they're also a, a matte DLC coated, I believe, and they should hold up just as well as everything else here. Of course, the scales are titanium, and I believe the actual cartridge style liner is most likely steel. Uh, but just give you guys a little close up view of this beautiful diamond milling. This does come in a handful of different variations. I believe this is kind of the higher end of the compact chad around 255 260 around there really not that bad for what you're getting um i believe this is quite justifiable um and you know looking at it as it is without taking it apart the internals i'd say that i got a very clean and normal looking unit nothing seems out of place nothing weird no weird scratches or marks. The finish on the tie here, um, it's kind of like a bead blast, but it may be a, a tad bit more reflective and a little bit more refined than it's just a typical chalky bead blast. Um, I like it. I don't mind it one bit, um, but I definitely do like the size and this is definitely absolutely going in the pocket uh, the next couple days for work. The blade material on this is PM60 and on the full size chad that I had, I believe I actually reprofiled it right before I sold it off. Um, thankfully, I was able to get the majority of my money back for that. Why didn't I just return it? Well, I wanted to support Blade Binge, and I just I didn't care about losing you know twenty bucks on on a knife. It, I I'm not gonna cry over twenty bucks. Um, I was thankful for the experience, right? That was a very very sought after knife. The the reverse tux full-size chad very uh, popular knife um, and I think they might have done another run of them even though they said that they weren't going to possibly I can't remember or that might have been with the uh, with the padre or padre or we would like to pronounce it but um, with this guy I think this might be a model that if it hits home just right a lot of people are gonna be talking good about this and this may be a regular because it's actually really nice in hand, but it is on the smaller side. We can do a couple little size comparisons here. Uh, not a whole lot, not the typical six, just let's do some compact EDC carries, you know, some common stuff. Spyderco Native 5 right here, really banged up and chewed up from gardening work. By the way, M4 is probably the worst fucking steel to use for gardening tasks. Don't do it. Not worth it. Um... This guy right here, the Civivi <clears throat> Vision FG, is a little bit longer, maybe by almost a whole inch actually, but the available cutting edge is close to the same. The edge on this is flat. This has the tiniest bit of belly. Um, so ergonomically speaking, those are a little bit different because uh, you have a dedicated forward finger troll on that. This is just kind of a flat spot. Um, What's something else that I can do that's kind of common? Hmm. Hmm. Leave this guy right here. This is, uh, I mean, a full size to, I suppose, a compact crossbar locking knife. This is the, uh, <laughs> I'm blanking here. Give me a second. The Predator, uh, CMB Maiden Dives Predator. It's been a minute since I've had to say its name. I haven't been making a lot of 
uh, content lately. But yeah, this is a CMB Made in Ash Predator. It's not a large knife by any means, but I would consider it a full size, at least in the grip. Um, and the cutting length is not that much more, really. It's just a difference of the blade shape there. So what else, what else do I got here? I have some Ashers, but I mean, they're not like super, super like common to have. Uh, here's here's my, my Padre. Um, so the Padre definitely has a large presence, um, you know, in a screen setting, however you're watching it. But truth be told, it's not that monstrous of a knife. It is on the larger side, yeah. And you do have a mile and a half worth of grip space. Um, and a really wacky looking spicy camel toe blade shape but uh yeah yeah it's uh just just a little different here if you want to take a look at those two blades just very very different but same finish is applied there and this is what um what it looks like used it's really grimy really gross looking but it wipes right off and i have had zero scratches this has seen two sharpenings already a reprofiling and then a sharpening which i would call two sharpenings and uh broken in just absolutely beautiful that kind of dry sound has gone away and the uh multi-row bearing system is actually breaking in beautifully i think it's almost completely broken in but getting past that uh polished dlc is probably going to be a little difficult and i'm assuming the same thing for this so uh, in my time with this, whether it's going to stay in the collection or not, um, I'm going to keep all the original packaging just in case. I know this is going to be a, it's most likely going to be a sought after piece right here. Um, but just in case, if this doesn't stay in the collection, I'm going to keep all the original stuff and sell it off at a later date. Um, not to mark up or anything stupid like that, but um, I'm glad to have been able to check it out. I'll be carrying it and then... In a couple weeks or so, I'll come back with a full review on this. We could do the weight real quick and test that factory edge and we'll call it a day. 4.5, nothing crazy there. Uh, you don't have internal milling, but um, it could have been, should have been, but honestly, that weight for the size, I just, I could care less. I just, I just don't care. That's not bad at all nothing really to complain about there factory edge yeah it uh it's nice and clean it's a little bit more refined than a standard working edge something that you would get on a, a civivi or a scent cut or something a little bit more common like that it feels a little bit more refined it doesn't feel over stropped uh, this feels like it has a good bit of bite the pm60 here supposedly supposedly it has a 66 to 67 HRC, which is sick. It is absolutely awesome. Um, but that also means that it's a nightmare to sharpen. And it absolutely is. Um, this was hell to sharpen, but you know what? It is absolutely possible. Um, I use the one and only Wicked Edge system. I don't use any other sharpening system. And with their standard stones that they send, their uh, diamond and I believe metal uh sharpening stones these guys right here this is the one that i use to hog off a lot of material the 100 to 200 they do offer a ultra course which i think is like 50 to 80. i do plan on getting that but that's like an extra like 120 bucks that i rather spend on another knife than more stones so i'm kind of in that spot right now um, I also have a Dremel, an actual Dremel from the Dremel brand coming in, one of their nicest models, because I want to start doing some uh, some scale carving work, some more modifications and fun crap like that. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's not a whole lot more to talk about here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and leave a like down below. If you are subscribed, thank you so much. I appreciate all your support and your patience, of course. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing because I have plenty more videos and content coming you guys this way. And with that being said, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.